Hey everyone, my name is Wedge. Yesterday brought us a ton of crazy Magic Origin spoilers and today doesn't look to be any different. There are some rough translations in here, but some of these cards are crazy. We've got a lot to talk about. Also, please hit the like button if you like these videos. It lets us know you enjoy the content and makes me feel special. It's the little things. Hangerback Walker is double X for a 0-0 construct. It enters the battlefield with X plus 1 plus 1 counters on it. When it dies, put a 1-1 Thopter artifact token with flying onto the battlefield for each plus 1 plus 1 counter on the walker. You can also pay 1 and tap it to put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on it. The first important thing about this card, and it's already been brought up a lot, it is now the only 0 converted mana cost artifact creature in modern with a toughness of 0. If you've ever seen the Disciple of the Vault slash Protean Hulk decks, it's a thing. There's already talk about through the breach on your Protean Hulk, play the Disciples and the Walkers, swing with Hulk, win the game. Just saying it exists, be aware. That's all that needs to be said about this card. Tragic Arrogance is 3 colorless and 2 white for a sorcery. For each player you choose from among the permanents that player controls an artifact, a creature, an enchantment, and a planeswalker. Then each player sacrifices all other non-land permanents they control. Wowza. Okay, this isn't Cataclysm, but that's okay because Cataclysm is stupidly overpowered. Definitely a card meant for a commander, and unlike a lot of potential commander cards, this one will see play guaranteed. It doesn't hit lands, but I don't care. In a multiplayer game, this is going to do some serious work against most any strategy. It isn't too, too expensive, and there's no downside to it if you're behind on board. Sign me up. Guilt Leaf Winnower is 3 colorless and 2 black for a 4-3 elf warrior with menace. When it enters the battlefield, you may destroy target non-elf creature whose power and toughness aren't equal. <laughs> this is hilarious! Of course, the perfectionist elf from Lorwyn would be hypocritical. He himself is a 4-3. That's just good flavor. Playable? Definitely. It kills a ton of stuff in standard right now. Rhinos, Tassiger, Corsair, a widespread of dragons. I'm really starting to hate elves in standard. It isn't even a thing yet. This card is really good. Plus, don't forget, it has menace, forcing your opponent to double block to kill them in combat. I really like this card. Ideally, I'm actually super scared of elves. Necromantic Summons is 5 mana for a sorcery. Put target creature card from a graveyard onto the battlefield under your control. It also has Spell Mastery. If there are 2 or more instants and or sorcery cards in your graveyard, that creature enters the battlefield with 2 additional plus 1 plus 1 counters on it. So this is basically a non-dragon version of Fearsome Awakening. I'm cool with that, especially because you can take a creature from any graveyard, not just your own. It's relatively unique for cards like this. Spell Mastery shouldn't be too hard to hit, so you get a bit of a boost, which I also like. It is expensive for standard play, but commander players, specifically Marchesa ones, are going to be pretty happy about this, as they should be. It's right in their wheelhouse. Rough translation incoming. Titan of Erebos is one colorless and three black for a 5-5 giant. It has indestructible as long as no opponent controls a creature. Whenever a creature leaves an opponent's graveyard, you may discard a card. If you do, return the Titan from your graveyard to your hand. Uh, okay, this is definitely a weird card, right? I mean, four mana for a 5-5 kills Siege Rhino for days, so I'll take it, but the abilities on it are peculiar. One thing we need to straighten out though, it says leave the graveyard. That means it's triggered by reanimation, exile effects, and delve. Basically anything that moves a creature card from the graveyard triggers this. I'm not sure how much you're going to use that ability, but it doesn't cost any mana, and you do get a 5-5 back, so maybe a lot. I don't know what to think about this card. I love 5-5s five for 4. Mono Black Devotion coming back? Gary's been lonely for a while. Poor guy. Next up is a series of cards heavily supporting an artifact theme in Magic Origins. If you love Izzet artifacts, this is going to excite you. Chief of the Foundry is 3 mana for a 2-3 construct that gives other artifact creatures you control plus 1 plus 1. Whirler Rogue is 2 colorless and 2 blue for a 2-2 human rogue artificer. When it enters the battlefield, you get 2 1-1 flying thopter tokens. Artificer's Epiphany is 3 mana for an instant that lets you draw 2 cards. If you control no artifacts, discard a card. Lastly, we have Reclusive Artificer. 2 colorless, 1 blue, and 1 red for a 2-3 human artificer with haste. When it enters the battlefield, you may have it deal damage to target creature equal to the number of artifacts you control. Clearly Origins is pushing this, and that's awesome. The Chief is a great lord, having 3 toughness instead of 2. It's very important. 
The Epiphany is an upgraded catalog if you control artifacts. That's very good. Even just a Dark Steel Citadel turns it on. The Artificer herself is a neat card. Haste is for flavor more than anything else, but the ability is rock solid. Get a bunch of Thopters, burn their Siege Rhino to the ground, it's another card that can give the Blue-Red Artifact deck a little more reach. I know a lot of you are trying to build that again as a pet project. This group of cards might help you out there. The Chief makes your Thopters huge, the Epiphany is the best card advantage you're going to get, and cards like Whirling Rogue create bodies. Regardless of how good or bad this deck is, I'll build it. Don't you worry, I have a place in my heart for blue-red artifacts. Magmatic Insight is one red mana for a sorcery. As an additional cost to cast it, discard a land card, draw two cards. What? This might be one of the best eternal red draw spells we've seen in a long time. No, I'm not joking. Lands, decks, and legacy are gonna love this to death. Storm players probably having a coronary. This drawback is a complete joke. Decks that want this card don't care about lands at all, not even a little bit. Of all the cards I've seen in Origin so far, this may be the most playable past standard in constructed formats. I feel like this is the right amount of hype to give it. Honestly, Storm players, I know it's a sorcery, but you're Storm. Come on. Lands players, someone, someone back me up here. This card is nauseatingly good. I may vomit out of excitement. <laughs> Herald of the Pantheon is two mana for a 2 2 Centaur Shaman. Enchantment spells you cast cost one less to cast. Whenever you cast an enchantment spell, you gain one life. Can I just say, is Magic Origins becoming the set where they put all the awesome enchantments they couldn't fit into Theros because this thing's insane? Play it with Frontier Siege, Corsair Crucifix, Eidolana Blossoms. There was already an enchantment deck running around before this set. Having an enchantment lowered is crazy. Constellation could definitely make a comeback with this card. So much value. So many cheaper gods slash Constellation creatures slash Starfield of Nyx. Ah, oh, someone make this deck. Also, this is going straight into Angus McKenzie. Just be afraid. And more ridiculous green cards. Mrs. Revelation is five colorless and two green for a sorcery. Scry five. Yes, five. Then reveal the top card of your library. If it's a creature card, draw cards equal to its power and gain life equal to its toughness. Wizards, what are you doing? You gave Scry 5 to green. Green of all the colors. Green. What happened to keeping mechanics loyal to their colors? Scry 5, unbelievable. Okay. Despite what you may think, this is in Sphinx's Revelation for green. It's super expensive and a sorcery. What does it do really well? It gives Maelstrom Wanderer another bomb card. Have fun, you crazy elemental players. This card is a doozy. Outland Colossus is three colorless and two green for a 6-6 giant with renowned six. The Colossus can't be blocked by more than one creature. Holy crap, this guy's gigantic! Can't be blocked by more than one creature, so favorable blocks are a no-no unless you have Death Touch. When he gets three, becomes a 12-12. Sure, he doesn't have Trample, but find a way to give this menace and he can't be blocked at all. That's just funny. While he is a 5-mana 6-6 six, six creature and seeing him in Constructed would be hilarious, pretty sure this is going to be another limited powerhouse. After all, it doesn't really do the job Arbor Colossus does. Don't get me wrong, it's a hilarious card, just... No idea where it's going to fit in that huge devotion-based green deck, which is absolutely where it would fit. I thought that we would wind down spoiler season a little bit as we got closer to the entire set's release, but nope. We keep getting ridiculous cards. Honestly, some of these are insane. That red draw spell, though, can't get past it. Wow. Let me know what you think in the comments and which cards you like the most. We had plenty to talk about today. As always, subscribe for the latest and most reliable Magic Origins spoiler information you could ever need. This is the Manasaurus, I'm Wedge, thanks for watching, we'll see you next time.